What's going on guys? It took me eight months to make this video, but I'm finally releasing my Juin Weeble 3 gimbal settings for the smoothest shots possible. Now, obviously this is purely gonna be dependent on the setup that you're using, but if you're using a similar setup to what I'm using, for example, the Sony a7S III and the uh, 1635 uh, Sony Zeiss lens, then uh, with a camera cage, then you're gonna get pretty similar results when it comes down to smoothness and overall performance. Now, before you watch this video, I do encourage you to watch some of my previous tutorials on how to balance gimbals, because if you don't have balance, proper balance for your gimbal, or if you don't know how to just balance your gimbal in general, you're just not gonna get the smoothest possible shots that you really want. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the gimbal menu. First, what you wanna do is turn on your gimbal, then hit the menu button on the side handle and use the little dial as the selector and you will be able to change the settings that way. Now, what I want you to focus on right now is how my gimbal behaves. Look at the tilts. Let me put it actually into full follow mode. Look at the tilts, look at the pans, just look how smooth everything is. It actually looks like a traditional glide cam or manual steady cam. It just looks so flowy and fluid. This is how you want your gimbal to behave. Stock, the Weeble 3 does not behave like this. So let's tweak those settings. So once you hit the menu button, the first thing you're gonna see is the motor option. So you're gonna use the dial selector on the side, click it. Then you have three options here. You have auto, custom, and level. Auto will automatically calibrate the gimbal to adjust motor torque. So if you're using multiple different camera setups, you can use the auto function, which 80% of the time is pretty accurate when it comes down to motor power. However, if you don't want to use auto, you can go down to custom and actually adjust the motor power settings yourself with the roll, tilt, and pan motors. Here are the current settings that I have for my gimbal. On tilt, I have 80, roll, 60, Pan, 50. I don't remember if these are the default settings or not. I might have tweaked them, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but these are the proper motor torque settings that I have for my current setup. I think it's pretty good and it doesn't buzz or make any weird vibration noises. Now, if you do hear those noises, odds are you are sending too much torque to the motor. So you have to decrease that power and that vibration and those weird motor noises will disappear. Once you're happy with these settings, you can press on the menu button and it will save that current adjustment. You can also select level, which is pre-programmed by Juin, which has three different motor settings, such as low, medium, and high. If we go back to the main menu, you can go to advance. And this is the most important part of the whole gimbal setup process. This is speed, smooth, and deadband. Speed is how quickly you want the gimbal to react to both your movements and the joystick. Control is basically the joystick. How fast do you want the gimbal to react to that joystick? That's this setting here. Here are my current settings. This is honestly user preference. I like this because I don't like jerky joystick movements. These are very slow, smooth, and stable settings. And I just overall really enjoy using the joystick with these settings. But to be honest with you, I don't use the joystick all too much. When I have to manually adjust the camera, I can hand position it or I can use the joystick, but you want there to be very smooth movements, especially if you're shooting things like weddings or parties and you need dead on accuracy, you need it to be slow, steady, and smooth. The follow settings is how quickly you want the gimbal to follow your movements. Here are my current settings. We have 50, 50, and 75. Again, your settings may be slightly different, but if you're shooting on a mirrorless camera with a medium-sized lens, then these settings should work perfectly for you. Now let's go back to the previous menu. Let's select Smooth. This is a pretty straightforward setting. How smooth do you want the gimbal to react? So if you're completing a gimbal movement, you want it to dampen the stop or slowly come to a stop. That's this setting here. I set it to 100 on all axes, but you can actually make it smoother by going over 100. I don't recommend this because this will make the gimbal very delayed with movements. So 100 seems to be the perfect sweet spot for this gimbal. Now let's talk about dead band settings. You'll find this in the previous menu below smooth settings. The dead band is basically the amount of degrees it will take for you to physically turn the gimbal for the motors to kick in and complete that movement. So for example, if you have a look right here, I actually have to turn the gimbal 
a certain amount of degrees for the motors to actually start moving. And in other words, it's basically the delay for the gimbal. So it, it's all measured in degrees. So here are my settings for that. Tilt, we have three, roll five, and pan 10. Now I found these numbers to be very accurate with multiple different camera setups, especially if they're heavier. So you don't necessarily have to worry about changing these settings if you have a different setup than mine. But after trial and error, I did find that these dead band settings were spot on with the camera setups that I have. And I'm sure they'll work out for you too. Now, one last thing that I want you to change in your gimbal, and I know you're gonna love this, is when you go back to the main menu, you go to trigger. Trigger is basically this front trigger right here. Now, most of the time I'm using pan follow mode to complete the smoothest movements. That's pan with no tilt. However, if I want to incorporate tilt in some shots, I quickly engage the full follow mode by hitting that trigger. And then if I hit the mode button, it goes back to PF. So you can easily switch between those two settings very quickly and that's useful. So overall guys, those are my current gimbal settings on the Juin Weeble 3. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in getting the Juin Weeble 3, check out the link down below. I highly recommend this gimbal. It's currently my favorite. And uh, yeah, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe with those notifications turned on, and I'll see you in another one. Peace.